When you run a cafe, you get used to customers coming and going without any explanation. It's part of running a business. But this time, something was different. When one discusses the works of filmmaker Wong Kar Wai, the word auteur inevitably surfaces as the word that best describes the Hong Kong filmmaker. His films are immaculately organic in structure, beautiful from shot to shot and different from any other filmmaker in his era. He cut his gangster teeth as did many Hong Kong filmmakers in the 80s on 1988's As Tears Go By. In 1990's Days of Being Wild, he discovered a texture and was able to explore his theme of love lost. Caught up in the swordsman craze of the 90s led to his Ashes of Time film, whose troubled production led to maybe his most celebrated improvised film, 1994's Chung King Express. It was there, and its follow-up, Fallen Angels, where Kar Wai establishes who he is and how he sees Hong Kong and its inhabitants. 1997's Happy Together sees him tackle a very personal story of romance before the 100 years of British rule made such a film an impossibility to even consider again. In the Mood for Love, which many consider his masterpiece, slows the pace down to a crawl to explore the fine details of one soul, much like he did in his earlier film, Days of Being Wild. In the film 2046, a follow-up to In the Mood for Love, we see him again explore what love might look like in the future. That film seemed to mark an end to his Hong Kong exploration series. There didn't seem to be anywhere else left to go. Wong Kar Wai is truly singular in his vision and style. So much so that it may have boxed him in in a sense, just like Hitchcock, where doing something outside of that style might have felt too scary. There is one film in Kar Wai's filmography that gets no love, and that is his sole American film, My Blueberry Nights, from 2007. Hello? Who? No, I'm sorry, I don't know anyone by that name. No, listen, I, I, I get about 100 customers a night, I can't keep track of all of them. A filmmaker's native tongue has a lot to do with the rhythm of a film and why it works, and maybe why Blueberry Nights feels just a little bit off from his filmography. And that's okay. For those who are versed in the Wong Kar Wai verse, his style is deeply rooted in the feel and energy of Hong Kong. Take Chungking Express, for example. That film only works in its native tongue. If you let a Quentin Tarantino direct that story, the dialogue changes, as does its rhythm. When you watch a film as a viewer, you're having a conversation with the filmmaker who made it. You may not realize that, but subconsciously, you're having a conversation. When Kar Wai originally conceived of the story for My Blueberry Nights, it was going to be as a chapter in an anthology film entitled Three Stories About Food. The other story in the anthology emerged as the main focus for Kar Wai, and it evolved into what we know today as 2000's celebrated In the Mood for Love. The footage shot for the Hong Kong version of the Blueberry Nights segment with Tony Leung and Maggie Chung was set aside but later assembled as a short film, which was entitled In the Mood for Love 2001. It screened in New York at a film festival one time, and only a few frames remain at this present time to compare the two pieces. Come away with me, and I will ride you. Nora Jones, who had become a breakout sensation after her album Come Away With Me, was contacted by Kar Wai to meet up for coffee. Not knowing much about him, Jones assumed that he wanted to use some of her music in his next film. But to her surprise, he asked if she, much like pop star Faye Wong did in Chunking Express, would she consider starring in My Blueberry Nights? Jones watched his films, and after watching In the Mood for Love, told the director she was all in. No, he didn't eat both of them. Our portions are too big for a person to eat two. No, one was for him, and one was for his girlfriend. 
Wong Kar Wai, like Nora, because of her spontaneity, who, like Fei Wong in Chongqing Express, had a freshness to her that he felt he could craft a genuine, organic story around. My Blueberry Nights is a story in three parts of Jones's character Elizabeth, as she lives over the course of a year in three different cities working odd jobs. The first in New York with Jude Law, the second in Memphis with Rachel Weisz and David Strathern, and the third with Natalie Portman. In this first section, we meet both Nora Jones and Jude Law's character in a diner. Law, the diner's operator, explains that the jar of lost keys is for those that mysteriously never return for them, and that each set of keys has a unique story to them that remains a mystery. Jones drops her keys in after a breakup with a boyfriend. Law expresses his own heartbreak to her, and a bond is formed between the two characters. There's always a whole blueberry pie left untouched. So what's wrong with the blueberry pie? There's nothing wrong with the blueberry pie. To cope with the heartbreak, Law recommends the blueberry pie that no one ever orders every day. One night, Jones returns for her keys in the Jar of Souls, a sign that a reconciliation has occurred, leaving Law wondering if Elizabeth will ever return. The underlying theme in all of Carwai's work is unrequited love. This theme is piled on pretty thick here, as the character of Elizabeth moves to work two jobs in Memphis, Tennessee, and meets the characters of Rachel Weisz and David Strathern, who have a broken marriage that Elizabeth is able to learn from firsthand. I know it's none of my business, but have you ever thought about cutting back? Wong Kar Wai's usual cinematographer, Christopher Doyle, was replaced here by the great Darius Kajani, and he does an admirable job of aping Doyle's Hong Kong style, but even here there is just something missing, something kind of difficult to quantify, to be honest. And this goes back to that rhythm of the language barrier. DP Chris Doyle may be an Aussie, but he lives in Hong Kong. He gets the energy and the mood of the people, and that carries into his photography. And make no mistake, Darius's work here is stunning at times, and there are shots and scenes in the film that are all-time greats on par with some of Doyle's. But Blueberry is missing Doyle in a spiritual sense. Doyle is to Car Wai as Pressburger is to Powell. You can separate them and make other pictures, but together they are something special. One of the most interesting things that Kajani does in Blueberry is to give each main location a distinct visual tone. In New York, the diner is dominated by a green neon light. Green is then amplified to the max. In Memphis, it's a big red neon sign that gives its location its unique character. Everything and everyone is wrapped in saturated deep reds. And the Vegas portion of the film goes for a more pastel color palette, which in turn produces some really beautiful imagery. Hey, what happened? The car's yours. You gotta give me a ride though. When Car Y works with Doyle as his DP, he will often play music for Doyle and say, doesn't this song sound like the boulevard or doesn't this song sound like the color of green? Is it possible that Karwai and Darius didn't have that communication background here? Karwai and Darius prepared for the film by taking a long road trip across the country to the cities that they would be shooting in and took a lot of photographs. These images were assembled and used for inspiration not just for the photography of the film, but the music and the story of the film as well. But could that be what's possibly missing from this film? In that just visiting a city and getting a vibe as opposed to living in a city doesn't always translate the same. Is that the missing DNA that makes this film feel so alien to us? If you jump into My Blueberry Nights and you're an avid Wong Kar Wai fan, the fact that characters are speaking English feels off-putting at first because the style is very much his Hong Kong style. It's kind of like eating your favorite sandwich and then pouring a bunch of maple syrup on it. Something just feels familiar but a little off. But as time has passed and with repeated viewings, this film really does start to work. It can at times feel like a warm-up act. 
as if something bigger will be coming, a more confident English produced film perhaps. As of this writing, that future English language film has yet to materialize, but we can still hold out hope. Not all of Blueberry Nights works, but the parts that do, like Natalie Portman's Vegas hustler character, harken back to some of Carwise more blusterous characters from, say, Fallen Angels, for example. And that could be because she's the only character in the film not really specifically looking for love. She's looking for approval, and she's looking to win love in another way, and that makes her a standout in a film of otherwise gloomy, heartbroken souls. Have you learned nothing from your time with me? You have to stop taking people at their word. Well, maybe you should start. <laughs> in maybe the best scene in the film, Jude Law has a final confrontation with his ex-girlfriend, played by none other than Cat Power. Not only does Cat Power's track Living Proof imprint the film, but her brief performance here with Law as they navigate their final moment together outside is really a standout scene. Why'd you come? I guess I just wanted to see if I could remember what it felt like. It feels completely natural, and the way it's shot feels voyeuristic as Car Y navigates their faces through the bitter cold, the lettering and neon drenched windows. It's an amazing moment that shows how he can find ways with his camera to find calmness in chaos. Music is always part of the Wong Kar Wai puzzle. And not only do we get Nora Jones and Cat Power tracks, but composer Rai Cooter contributes several tracks in which Kar Wai used ahead of time to dictate the pace of the scenes they shot. Much like Sergio Leone did in playing Inyo Morricone music on set during a scene to get the actors in the mood. He uses music just as he does photography to help dictate the energy of the scene with his performers. Jude Law stated that most films are made as mirrors of what a director has in his head already, whereas Wong Kar Wai is creating things as they are happening in real time, leaving actors in a more creative mode to be true collaborators of a scene. Law also said that coming to work not knowing what was going to happen each day wasn't scary, but exciting because it was truly collaborative. Karwai also only gives actors their portion of the script for their respective characters, so that no preconceived notions of the other actors can influence their performance. You still open? No reason for me to still be here if I wasn't. I heard this place has the best coffee and pie in town. Where'd you hear that? The ending is quite like a piece of blueberry pie, just sweet and has one of the best shots of the film. The shot that will grace the cover of the film and its promotional materials. As it cuts to a macro shot of ice cream blending into a beautiful piece of blueberry pie, symbolizing the merging of two wandering souls. Blueberry Nights often feels a little bit of a discarded film in the Wong Kar Wai filmography, but it's still a stunningly focused film about lost love something Wong Kar Wai can do better than anyone.